This is the DNA extraction procedure for phage hunters, the new DNA extraction procedure, 2016 on. Uh, we're going to start this in the hood. This is the hood. This is where you do DNA uh, extraction. You use RNAs and DNAs. Uh, you're only going to do the very first part in the hood. After that, you're going to move out. You'll notice the items that we use in the hood have red tape on them to show that they are for use in the hood. Now, we occasionally find items that don't have red tape on them, like this, which I just found in there. Uh, don't bring anything into the hood that doesn't have red tape on it that we didn't put in there because we want to work very hard to prevent DNA contamination outside in the lab because DNA destroys DNA. Your whole goal here is to isolate DNA and not let your DNA be destroyed. So what you're going to do to start this procedure is you're going to take a mill of your lysate. Now, you're going to want lysate that's in the 10 to the 9th or higher concentration. You're going to take it and you're going to transfer it into a 15 mil tube. So here we have lysate from uh, hamster. All right, and you, we have it in a, uh, a 15 mil tube. Now this has to be fresh, 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 okay? Isolated that day, harvested that day. So we have brand new lysate. And we're going to put uh, nuclease in it, right? And so we have, using one of these potentially contaminated tubes, a, 10, uh, a P10, all right, P10. They use these uh, red or pink tips. There are a couple different appearances for these things. Oops, not a lot of room in here. Here's another version of them. These tend to fool people a little bit because they have a wide opening, uh, but that's because it covers the end of the pipette. But they're still very small little pipette tips. Okay, they stay in the hood. You don't take them out of the hood because they might be contaminated. Nuclease is gonna be in the ice bucket. We're going to take out our four microliters. We're going to add it to our sample. Tip goes in the waste in the hood. I bet stays in the hood. Sample stays in the hood. We're going to mix by inversion gently a few times. No vortexing. And we're going to leave it there for uh, 30 minutes. It's okay if it goes a little long. You don't want it to go a little short. It's going to sit at room temperature for at least 30 minutes. So we're going to pause it here and then we're going to come back. Oh, when you leave the hood, by the way, before when you're done, take off your gloves because you potentially have DNA on them. So we're going to take off our gloves when we walk away from the hood. We'll come back in 30 minutes. Okay, so our DNA has uh, hopefully destroyed all of the bacterial DNA and our RNA has destroyed all of the bacterial RNA. And now what we have is phage floating around in this sample. We put on new gloves um, before we come into the hood. Uh, what we have is phage floating around in this sample. We gotta get the DNA out of the phage capsids, right? Because we've gotten rid of all the bacterial uh, DNA nuclei, uh, uh, nucleotide contamination, right? Nucleic acid contamination got rid of all of its DNA and RNA. So how do we get rid of it? Well, uh, excuse me, how do we get it? Well, we got to break open the capsids, but before we do, we got to make sure we get rid of the DNA and the RNA. That's a problem because if we break open the capsids uh, and this DNA spills out, it's all going to get chewed up by the DNA. And so what we're going to do is we are going to use DNA cleanup resin. It's going to be located in the water bath. This is in both hoods, and uh, in both rooms. You know, it doesn't matter which room you're using, unless you're in open lab, in which case it might only be in the active room. Uh, in the water bath at 37 degrees is DNA cleanup resin. That contains guanidine thiocyanate. And what that does is it breaks apart uh, not only the capsids, because this disrupts proteins, but also it'll destroy the enzymes, and that'll get rid of uh, DNA and RNA at the same time. And so in here, you will find DNA cleanup resin. It'll be labeled. We will keep refilling these. If you find any empty that are empty, let us know so we can refill them. Now, as these sit, 
the the DNA cleanup resin the, is actually um, little beads that will settle down into a pellet. So when you get it, make sure you mix it just by inversion right before you use it. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to grab a pipette, seriological pipette. We're going to use the one that's potentially contaminated in the hood. If you're out of these, we'll get more, but don't come out of the hood to do this. Okay. Notice I leave it wrapped while I attach it. That way it's still sterile. Okay, we've got our DNA cleanup resin, and we're going to mix it even right the second before we use it. Okay. And then I even mix it even as I'm getting it, because I go up and down a couple times in the pipette. All right, and we need two mils, so that's one, two mils. Okay, that's two mils right there, two mils. And then we add it to our sample. All right, this is trash. And then we're gonna put this back at 37 degrees for the next person. We mix this by inversion. And now we want to get out of the hood because now we've killed the DNA. We can get out of the hood and get away from potential new contamination uh, by DNA. And so we want to move to a place where we can continue working and get away from any potential DNA contamination. Because this guanidine thiocyanate uh, just took, a, took care of the DNA that was in our sample. And so we're going to work over here now at the bench. But one of the things you want to do is you want to change your gloves because they are potentially contaminated. So I'm going to change my gloves. We'll pause this and I'll show you the next step. Okay, we're live again. So we have our sample. We're working at the bench now because we're away from the DNA. So the DNA is in here in our hamster uh, phage DNA uh, is dead and so we want to stay away from the hood and so now what I have is two microcentrifuge tubes we're going to need two because this has the one mil of our sample plus two mils of uh, the DNA cleanup resin that's a total of three we need two tubes to get uh, uh, to, to fit it all um, and our next step is to spin it down so it needs to go into microcentrifuge tubes so that's going to be one and a half mils per tube right so to divide it up equally, we'll use a P1000. Uh, we could do a mil and a mil and then 500 microliters, 500 microliters, or we can just do 750 four times. That'll work very nicely and make sure that they're pretty much equally, equally distributed. Notice it's already settling, see? So even as you're about to transfer it into the two tubes, give it a little mix pipette up and down, you want it evenly distributed between these two tubes. Okay, so should be about two in each in case it didn't, in case it wasn't exactly the right amount. I like to go first one, then the other. All right, oh, I see a little tiny bit less in one than the other. Uh, we can even them out a little bit. All right, we're right there, very close. Um, and then I like to keep this tube because it's convenient for collecting waste as we go along, all right? And so now, next step is to spin it. The nice thing about having two of these is their balances for each other. And so it says spin for five minutes at 10,000 uh, G, not 10,000 RPM. And so if you aren't familiar with that, note that on these centrifuges, there's more than one way to set them. Right here is how you adjust the speed, right? You can turn the speed up and down. By pressing it, you click it back and forth. You can uh, alternate between RPM and what says, it says RCF. And that's a centrifugal force, or G-forces. And so we want 10,000 G. Here we can adjust the time. We want five minutes. 
and then you hit, uh, you just press it to start. Make sure that the lid up here at the top, that the lid is snapped on all the way, or else we're going to end up buying a new lid. And then you just press this to start. This is going to take five minutes, so I'm going to pause it while we wait. All right, and we're back. Centrifuge just stopped spinning. And what do we have here? You want to be gentle because these are not super tight pellets. Okay, and if we can see them, let's leave that closed. What you have here is. Ah! Oh, we'll have to cut that part out. <laughs> let's see if we can see it. We have a pellet. If you can see it. All right. And now what we want to do is we want to pull the liquid off from on top of the pellet. Okay. And so here's what that looks like. It is better to leave a little bit of liquid and just lose it. Uh, and leave it, I mean, than to lose any of the pellet. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use a P1000. Okay, and you can kind of take the top stuff off very quickly and easily, and that's when these come in handy. It's sorry, I'm filming this and doing it at the same time is a little tricky. Okay, it's when you're getting down near the bottom that it's a little more difficult. Now we have mostly just pellet, and we want to do that to both of them. Now I usually do this and hold it up in the air when I'm doing this instead of holding it down, but it's hard to film it that way. So I wouldn't do it the way I'm doing it right now if I were you. I'd hold it up in the air like uh, I was when I was trying to show it to you. Uh, it's a little easier to see it. Okay, so now we have two pellets with a lot of the packing buffer from the sample removed, from the, um, the resin removed. What do we do? Well, we want to clean the DNA, get rid of some of that bacterial contamination. And we're going to clean it with isopropanol. Oops, washed off of it. The problem with isopropanol is it cleans off Sharpies. Uh, and so this is 80% isopropanol. Um, and if you look at your procedure, what we're going to do is we're going to clean this with uh, two resuspensions of a mil of isopropanol in each tube. And so what we do is grab a pipette and add a mil of isopropanol. So make sure you set this to a mil if you had it at point, uh, 75, and add isopropanol to each tube. And now before you resuspend it, what I think you should do, because one of the problems we have is shearing DNA, is breaking the DNA, I think you should make the hole on this tube, on this tip, a little bigger. So I cut off just the very end, and I make it a little larger, okay? And what that'll do is it'll be a little more gentle when we're breaking up the pellet. And so you can see we still have a pellet in there, and now what we want to do is break it up. Now note, when you, if you just jam the tip in there, it'll overflow. And so you have to be gentle. You have to slowly suck it up as you are putting the tube in there, and you just go... Uh, the tip in there in the tube and you just go up and down until the pellet is completely resuspended. It'll take a minute, don't rush this. That's the thing about the molecular biology as opposed to the microbiology you've been doing. You have to follow the procedure precisely and you have to take your time. Because now at this point the mistakes are much more expensive, right? Because you lose the week of preparation to get the sample you're using, 
Uh, and that's very expensive. That's really painful. Okay. And so now you have your sample. It's all nice and gray, no lumps. And we'll do it to this one too. so you can see what I'm doing and I think this is more gentle when we got that, that opening a little wider okay great and so now we need to spin it again and we're going to spin it uh, for three minutes to bring the DNA back down into the pellet, to bring the resin back down into the pellet, and to pull the isopropanol up to the top. Again, make sure the lid's on, and I won't make you wait. Now that it's going, we'll just pause it here. Okay, it's been three minutes. And so this is what the pellets look like after cleaning with isopropanol. They're much tighter pellets. You can see they're kind of smashed against the side. And so I'm not gonna show you this whole procedure because you'd have to watch it over and over again. But what we're gonna do is you pull off the isopropanol, okay? just like before, and then you resuspend it, just like before, and you just repeat that procedure a second time. Spin it down again, okay? So we do two washes in isopropanol. And what you'll get is exactly the same thing, this pellet. Okay, so let's assume we've done that. And let's say this is the second time We've spun it down, and now we have these pellets. Now we have these pellets that have been cleaned with isopropanol. Remember, you want to do it twice. I've only done it once, okay? But let's just pretend I've done it twice so you don't have to sit through it for a long time, okay? You, don't, you want to be careful and not lose any of the pellet. I'm being fast instead of careful. Um, because it's kind of hard to hold the video camera and there okay and so we have the pellet right there all right so we resus we resuspended an isopropanol spun it down pulled it off resuspended an isopropanol spun it down pulled it off and then we have a pellet again we're going to resuspend it a third time in isopropanol Okay, but this time we're going to do something different with it. So we're only doing two washes. The third time we resuspend it with isopropanol is to go somewhere else onto a column. All right. But each time we resuspend, we make the two, uh, tip bigger because we want to be gentle. All right, so. Yeah, look at all that resin. All that resin has our phage's DNA in it. And this is how you get it all back. Nice and clean and one big solid chromosome instead of a big smear. Now if you're uh, doing the bacillus, then you use a mill of your stock lysate for this right off the bat. If you're strep, you might be able to do that if you have a high titer, but most of you won't. And you have to go through the HTL and then the concentration procedure 
that's uh, version one, DNA isolation version one, where you spin down 15 mils of your HTL, but what you do is you spin down 15 mils and then resuspend those 15 mils into one mil, and then you do this. The procedure is exactly the same once you get it back up into one mil. All right, so they end up doing exactly the same thing. So now that we have this in a little more than a mil each of isopropanol, we're gonna put it on a column. And so what this is what that looks like. We need a syringe and the easiest thing to hold these in is a tube because that's what they're made for and we need a column and so this is uh, the column right now that's it's not really a column it's just the body for a column the resin is actually going to make the column so it's just a plastic uh, uh, container like a glass tube um, with a little glass wool in it to keep the resin from getting through it actually fits in and snaps in to most of these into one of these um, micro centrifuge tubes and what you're going to do is you're going to take a three mil although we don't need it snapped in right now what you're going to do is you're going to take a three mil syringe disassemble it and it has that same lure lock that the filters that you used have and you can just screw it right into the top of the column. Now, pipette in your samples. That's why you resuspended it that third time. They won't be able to flow through just like they couldn't get through a filter. Maybe a little bit can slip through, but not much. But that's okay because the stuff that goes through right now is the isopropanol which is the stuff we don't care about. Okay. And again, we can use that 15 mil tube for waste. And you just push it through. Just like with the filters, never pull back on the plunger, always disassemble it, all right? And so now we have our column and it's got your DNA on it. And so what we have to do now is dry it. And so what you do is you're gonna need a, a few, in fact, four microcentrifuge tubes. Because here's what the procedure is gonna say. First, you're going to put it, and go ahead and make sure you snap it in, on a microcentrifuge tube, a clean one, and you're going to spin it five minutes, and notice, fits in just fine. Take another microcentrifuge and just fill it with water, and you can put it opposite. The plastic lid will make sure that the cap doesn't come flying off, and you're going to spin it five minutes, 10,000. And that's going to pull isopropanol that's still off the tube, still, excuse me, still on the column, off of it and into the tube. After you do that, there's going to be isopropanol in here. And so what you need to do is take the column out of there. I really need to get a good holder for this. What you need to do is take the column out of here. This is now going to be waste. It's all going to be the isopropanol and, and debris and put it in a second waste column, a waste tube. Now here's the thing, there may be more than one of you working at the same time, so please, always, 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 label, label, label. I saw someone who had to throw away their sample the other day because they didn't remember which one was theirs and which one was their neighbor's. Okay. So there's the hamster DNA, and again, it says to spin it a second time for a minute, that'll pull away any extra remaining isopropanol that you missed the first time, but again, this is waste. And now, you need the last two, because here is where you finally get, okay? So then you'll have it in a tube like this, a fresh tube, 
and you're going to go to a heat block. We have heat blocks in both rooms that are running at 80 degrees C. They have sterile DI water in them. Okay, You want to use the water right here at the heat block because we don't want it to cool down. And what you're going to do is pipette 50 microliters from the tube right into the top, if you can see it, to the top of the column. There's a little opening right there. You can just pipette 50 microliters right in there. Okay, you can let it sit for a minute and then spin it. Make sure it's in a brand new sterile fresh microcentrifuge tube because what comes through when you spin it this time is your DNA and if you have it in a dirty tube you just wasted all your time. So you want it labeled and you want it in a fresh tube and uh, that's your DNA. After that transfer it to a second fresh tube and do it again because you're going to elute twice with 50 microliters because sometimes you get more DNA out the second time, sometimes you get even more DNA out the second time than the first time. So do it twice.